Hi everyone, thank you for joining our engineering live q and I'm going to now hand it over to Paul to answer any of your questions. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Paul. Um, I'm the section manager for motor vehicle engineering uh, for Stevenson's and Brooksby campuses. Um, we have obviously lots of different opportunities for all of you from light vehicle to heavy vehicle to land based engineering um, with everything else in between. Uh, courses start from level one, level one, level two, level three. We have those in light vehicle. We have a level two in land based and we are looking at uh, possibilities of a full time course for HGV as well. We do also offer lots of apprenticeships. So we offer apprenticeships for a light vehicle, which is a level three apprenticeship in light vehicle technology, uh, light vehicle maintenance and repair, so IMI accredited qualification. Uh, it's a three year course, and it'd be obviously something that you can do if you wanted to straight out of school if you've got an employer willing to take you on. Now, what we do do is we do look at the students that we have from our courses. So anybody who's currently on one of our courses for level one, level two or level three, we look at those as potentials to go into any apprenticeships that come our way. Uh, most of our learners from level two last year, motor vehicle, quite a significant number of those have actually gone on to apprenticeships this year which has been which has been really good especially considering what's been going off so it's been a really good conversion rate for getting full-time learners into employment and onto apprenticeships uh, we work with lots of manufacturers so all the different dealerships and manufacturers around the country uh, we've got national programs for all of our apprenticeship stuff so level one uh, level one courses are primarily around the sort of learning all about the vehicles so within a, within a level one vehicle course you will learn everything there is to know all the basics about most vehicles so this will set you up for hgv light vehicle land base even motorcycle and even cycles if you needed this as well so it's a very very broad level one course, but it does enable you the skills and ability to you know, understand what all the technology is on the vehicles, what all the components are called, and um, how to use all the tools and to start removing and refitting some of the components. Um, and that's a, a year, year long course. So for a level one course, you would do all of the you would do all of those things. So you would do all the chassis, suspension, uh, braking systems, steering, all that sort of stuff, electrical, uh, engine technology, and transmissions. From then, you progress to a level two course, which is another another year long course. This takes this takes into account that you've already learned all the bits that you've done on your level one, and when you move into your level two, you then are looking at how all of the things that you've been removing and refitting and all those sorts of components how they all work together and the technology surrounding those how they're, how they're assembled and how you would repair them and how you would uh, get to understand the how they all work together so that's that's a lot of the level two is sort of removing refit of components but a deeper understanding of how they all work and being able to repair those components once you've removed and refitted them. Um, so once you've done that, you can progress on to the level three course, um, which is mainly the diagnostic side of the course. So from a level three it takes into consideration that you've learned all the skills that you need for level one and level two. So you know how all the components work, 
you know, where they all fit, you know, what all the tools are called, you know, all the components are called, you know, how to do all the basic um, disassembly and reassembly of large engine components, transmission components and all that sort of stuff. So now with level three, you're looking at the diagnostics. So when a car is presented to you or a lorry or a motorcycle or whatever it is presented to you with a warning light on or with a funny noise or with a knocking or something like something that's wrong with the car, but you don't have a lot of information uh, as a basically a setup as if a customer had presented the vehicle to you. So the customer's come in, the car's got this yellow warning light on the dashboard. I don't know what it means, or I've got this red warning light on the dashboard. Uh, can you have a look at it? So then you'll be using all our latest diagnostic equipment and working through uh, the fault finding procedures to get to that. So we do have quite a varied amount of diagnostic procedure, diagnostic equipment. So everything from uh, Snap-on to Bosch to uh, gel test to uh, Autel and several other different bits of equipment as well, which we are used for diagnosing all the different vehicles and all the different systems. We've invested quite a lot in this area uh, over the last couple of years. So now we have some very good sort of full running engine rigs and um, diagnostic equipment that you can actually, we can install faults onto the vehicle that you will then work through the, the diagnostic processes using all that type of equipment to find the actual fault on the system. We do have some live stuff that's set up for you as well. So on the cars and the vehicles that we have in the workshops, uh, something I've been doing myself over the last couple of days, uh, last couple of weeks even, is setting up some of the faults on the, the uh, HGV systems. Um, so they they're set up ready for some of the level threes that are coming in for this forthcoming year, whereby they'll come in, they'll have the equipment that we presented to them with a particular fault, and then they'll have to run through and diagnose what's actually wrong with that system. So it, the, all the areas are very, very similar. So whether you're doing a light vehicle, a land-based engineering, which is working on tractors and farm machinery and all those sorts of things, or whether you're working on HGV equipment, all of those are in a very similar format. So the level one, the level two, and the level three follow that same thing. So level one, learning all about systems. Level two, being able to remove and refit and repair uh, most of the components and everything else. And then level three, your diagnostics. So. Many, many years ago before we had the way it's set up now, most people would do a level three course and that would be a level three over two or three years. So you would you'd sign up for a level three course and you'd be like for two or three years. But nowadays what we do is we do a level one, a level two and a level three and they all take one year apiece and you end up with a certificate and a qualification at the end of each year. If you're lucky enough to, or if you, if you want to, and you're lucky enough to get an apprenticeship, an apprenticeship is set up a bit like it was originally. So it is a level three. You go straight on to a level three apprenticeship, but it's a level three over the three years. So you're virtually working through the same thing as you're working through a level one, a level two, and a level three. but it's, it's set up as just a level three apprenticeship. The only issue we have with apprenticeships, especially with the new standards that all the apprenticeships have moved on to, is that if you are to leave the programme, lose your job, um, decide apprenticeship's not for you at any particular point, then you don't actually get um, a full qualification at the end of any of the years until you go to your, you complete your final third year and you go to what we call EPA, which is the endpoint assessment. When you get to the endpoint assessment, you are externally assessed 
by uh, somebody from the awarding body who will come in and watch you do all the tasks, carry out exams with you and do all those sorts of things. So on an apprenticeship, the end point of everything leads up to the final end point assessment at the end of your level three. They do obviously do testing throughout the year, but fortunately they don't add up to it. So it's not something like a BTEC or something like that where you're working on papers and you're getting assignments and you're doing all that sort of stuff. And it all builds up evidence towards the end. On an apprenticeship, it is all down to your final level three end point assessment. On the full time courses, they are obviously every end of every year you get a certificate and a qualification at the end of every year. As you're working your way through the qualifications, all the units are uh, are achievable and are um, creditable. So we can actually, if you were to leave part way through the years, we could give you a certificate for the credits for the, the parts of the course that you've done. Uh, and there's a lot more opportunities to do different sort of exams. I mean, for a level one course, you have only, there's pretty much only one uh, multiple choice exam in the level one program, and that's primarily around health and safety and working safely with others and all those sorts of things. The vast majority of your assessment for your level one is done practically uh, and is assessed by your actual tutor. So your tutor will be teaching you all the theory about what you're going to be doing, teaching you all the practical skills that you need to do the jobs, and then you will do an assessment. So you will do that job practically yourself and you will be watched by your assessor who will then sign you off which your competence in doing the job, sign you off for each of those jobs. When you've collected all of those jobs and you've written them all up and you've got all that evidence together and you've sat that exam, all that evidence goes together into your portfolio and that will gain you your level one qualification. For the level two, very similar, uh, but there are a lot more exams within that and there are some written assessments within the level two as well. So within your level two, you will have to do quite a few, about seven, about seven or eight, depending on which level two you're doing, about seven or eight online tests. They're all multiple choice again, and they're about seven or eight written assessments that go with it as well, plus all the practicals that go along with those units. So the step up from level one to level two, is quite a big step. And then when you move to a level three, it's another big step up again because the assignment writing becomes a lot more involved and it's a lot more of your own work and how you uh, put together your diagnostic processes, where you've gathered evidence from, etc. etc. So it's more a lot more written, a lot more academic on the level three, um, as well as having to have all that deeper understanding of how the vehicles work. So when you write up your job cards, when you write up your assignments, it's not quite simple as I did X, Y, Z. You're having to put in there why you did that, why you took that step first, why you did that process, why you didn't, why you missed bits that had to go to, to go to other steps and that sort of thing. So having a real deep understanding of the systems is what you will need to have um, when you progress on to a level three and I wouldn't recommend anybody going straight to a level three if they've got absolutely no understanding of vehicles or vehicle technology at all um, because it does the prerequisites for that are sort of that you do already have that under underpinning knowledge from your level one and your level two so um, even those of you who hopefully have got fantastic GCSE grades today from, um, from whichever schools you've been to, uh, unfortunately, they won't give you the knowledge and the physical skills and abilities to actually do the practical side of it unless you've been doing that whilst you're at school or you've been working in a garage or you've been working with 
friends and relatives and you have a, a good basic understanding of all the vehicles and all the tools before you go into it. So there is possibility to start on level two, but it all depends on what your prior knowledge and experience has been. Um, and that's for, again for all of the all of the courses and all of the levels of things that you'll be doing. Um, Oh, um, so somebody has asked, can girls do this course as I feel like I'll be the only one? Um, no, definitely not. We have several girls every year come and do the course. It's a very, uh, it's becoming much more popular for girls to come and do the course. Um, it's you know, most of the most trade is not what it used to be, especially with the changes in technology and it becoming a much more academic um, skill to have. You know, it's, it's more about your understanding of systems and your ability to diagnose and rectify, especially with all the latest electric vehicle technology that we have coming out. Um, we do do quite a bit of electric vehicle stuff nowadays. Uh, it's, it's something obviously that's around these days and it's something that's going to be uh, where, where we're all heading. I mean, manufacturers like Volvo and I think Nissan, um, no, sorry, Honda, uh, Volvo and Honda have both pledged to get rid of their gasoline driven vehicles very, very quickly. And Volvo's already got rid of all of theirs. And, um, Honda are doing the same, so petrol driven vehicles are definitely a thing of the past and so I'm having in, I'm in this understanding of electric and hybrid drive vehicles um, is definitely something you're going to need. We cover all of that as well as air conditioning and refrigeration and lots of other skills that you're going to need to work in, work in a modern workshop these days, so all that sort of stuff is covered. Um, because it's a practical environment and um, just try and keep it more so that you're not all just standing around watching each other work, we try and keep it down to around about 15, 16 in a group and you'll have a tutor and a technician with you when you're in the practical areas so they'll both help and support you whilst you're actually doing tasks. Most of the time you'll be working in pairs. Um, and most of the time you'll have a vehicle to yourself to do practical tasks and to work through things. So there's plenty of resources available and there's plenty of support available for you for anything that you're doing. And is and the thing you'll need to buy as far as uniform goes is you'll need um, a pair of boots and some overalls. We haven't had a uniform as in you'll need a specific polo shirt or anything else like that. So it's primarily down to making sure you've got the correct PPE to go into the, the workshop environment. Um, we do offer, um, we've got a couple of places that we use that can and give you all that sort of stuff at very decent prices. Um, if anybody needs help and support in that way, um, we, so they can be supplied for you as well if you need any additional support in that side of things. Um, but yeah, you'll get that's that's about all we require you to have um, to come onto the courses, and that's only obviously for the for the workshop environments. Okay. Can I start the course on the 19th? Yeah, of course. Um, it's lifelong learning these days, so there's no age limit on any of the courses that you do. You'll be able to uh, start on any of the courses uh, at any age and progress through the same as everybody else. Uh, we've had learners in their uh, 40s and 50s that were on courses last year. Uh, just learning to themselves and they're actually coming back this year 
they do a level two last year and they're doing a level three this year so they're coming back again this year so absolutely no age limits at all for this um, it's life is about learning and you know, if, you, if you're in a trade and you want to upskill or train to do something else uh, a vehicle is a big, big motor industry has a lot of, lot of jobs available for people so you know, those people looking to upskill and change careers and that sort of stuff they've got all the all the opportunities they can need they can want um, we've got all the vehicles and all the resources to help them gain those skills and abilities to be able to progress that ambition and to get into that career on the course sorry i missed that one um, are there any trips or visits on the course? Trips or visits? Uh, yes. Uh, hopefully again this year. Um, obviously, the last couple of years it's been a bit hit and miss with obviously going anywhere or doing anything. But yes, we normally do do several trips out the, during the year and to places like most to the motor show and things like that and motor museums and um, factory tours and all that sort of thing so we do try and get you as many they are all obviously industry related we don't just take you to open towers for, for a day we take you to places that are educational so uh, yeah we'll do all those all do those sorts of trips so you can go um, i say at different manufacturers different uh, companies and we also have those coming in as well so some of the time we'll have people from industry uh, coming to the college and do like a talk on their industry and how you can get into it and all that sort of stuff give you a bit of an insight into what it's actually like to be either a technician or a service manager or a parts advisor or whatever it is whatever career path you'd like to do so yeah, we have those we have those sorts of things as well Okay, that's the session. If you have any further questions, I'll just pop our emails and our websites in the live QA section. We also have several apprenticeship opportunities available for both level two and level three. So, anyone that is interested, please contact our apprenticeship team. I'll just pop their email and telephone in your live QA section. We'd like to give a huge, huge thank you to Paul and thank you to everyone for joining our live QA today. Enjoy the rest of our virtual open evening and we really hope to see you soon. Take care everyone. Bye. Bye.